Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Rochester very busy addressing Christmas cards. There. Just about ten more and I'll be through addressing Mr. Benny's Christmas cards. Now, let's see. Mr. and Mrs. Bing Crosby and family. Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Cantor and family. Man, he sure killed a bunch of birds with those two stones. <laughs> These are pretty nice cards the boss is sending out this year, and he sure knows how to economize on them. Just look at that. Christmas greetings, 1944 to 1950 in <laughs> And to whom it may concern. Well, last I got all the cards addressed. Doggone, I wish the boss would buy stamps. I feel so conspicuous putting on that gray uniform and going from door to door. Oh, uh, all right, Chester. Are you through addressing those cards? Yes, Mr. Benny. Good, I'll be down in a minute. Okay. Say, I wonder what the boss is going to get me for a present. I heard him say he was going shopping this afternoon, so I better start dropping a few hints. No, he's immune to hints. I better lay it right on him. <laughs> So, you're all through with the cards, eh, Rochester? Yes, sir. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, oh, hey, hey, you today. sound happy today. What happened? Oh, nothing. I've just been thinking how lucky I am to be working for a man like you. Really? Yeah. Now, you take my friend Sam. He works for one of the stingiest men in the world. Why, last year for Christmas, all he gave Sam was three little handkerchiefs. Well, Rochester, I don't think that's such a bad present. I'll never forget Christmas Day. Down on Central Avenue, everyone was showing off their new wristwatches and gold cigarette cases and <laughs> diamond rings, and there was Sam with those three little handkerchiefs. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. It, it really embarrassed poor Sam when people asked him what his boss gave him for Christmas, and he had to pull out those three little handkerchiefs. <laughs> how, can a, how can a man be that cheap? It's possible, boss. It's possible. <laughs> Well, Rochester, you don't understand the spirit of Christmas. The important thing is the fact that you're remembered. The gift itself is nothing. I know. That's the kind of propaganda I'm trying to overcome. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Say, I better hurry up if I want to get my shopping done. I've got to pick up Miss Livingston first. Rochester, while I'm dressing, turn on the radio, will you? Okay, boy. And in case you don't like chops or steaks, then simply take a 12-pound standing rib roast, cover generously with strips from two or three pounds of bacon, and then place in oven. While this is roasting, you can make a tasty frosting for your cake by mixing one quart of sweet whipping cream <laughs> with a large-sized can of crushed pineapple and a pound of butter. Then call in all your friends and neighbors to help you eat this simple meal. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just listened to another weekly broadcast of Memories of Yesteryear. <laughs> Rochester, uh, wipe off my chin and get another station. <laughs> yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen... Does your complexion suffer from tattletale gray? <laughs> Do the crow's feet around your eyes have fallen arches? <laughs> Do you have dandruff? When you comb your hair, do your shoulders remind you of a white Christmas? <laughs> they do? Then why don't you try a bottle of sympathy soothing syrup? <laughs> Remember, folks, sympathy spelled backwards is your tapamus. Why? <laughs> T-A-P-M-Y-S. Rochester, Rochester, that's, 
That's pretty good stuff. Did you ever use any of that sympathy soothing syrup? Boss, if it comes in a bottle, I'll try it. <laughs> I know, I know. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the sympathy soothing syrup quartet will sing Dance with the Dolly, accompanied by Snoochie Getz and the sweetest music this side of the La Brea Tar Pits organ. <laughs> Well, Snoogie Get. We've got a good band, Rochester. See, I'll just have time to listen to this, and I'm going to walk over to Mary's house. That's what I'll do. Uh... <laughs> Hello. Hello, little doggy. Go away, doggy. <laughs> That's my old fault. Try to be nice to people. Sweet Georgia Brown. Oh, hello, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. I was just coming over to your house. You were? Yeah, I got that Christmas present you ordered for your sponsor. Oh, the ashtray? Good, good. You have it? <laughs> Did you have it engraved like I told you to? Sure, Jack. Here it is on the side. See? Oh, yes. To my sponsor, Mr. Hill, I hope this ashtray you will fill. And when you do, just think of me and good old LSMFT. <laughs> LS stands for Lucky Strike, and MFT means fine tobacco. So season's greetings and the like to you and yours from little Jacko. <laughs> Isn't that cute, Don? Yes. And by the way, Jack, I, I hope you don't mind if it costs more than you expected. I had a little music box installed in it. A music box? Yes, our sponsor will love it. Gee, an ashtray with a music box. That's a swell idea. Let me hear it, Don. Okay, where do I wind it up? Okay. Hmm, here's the drugstore. I think I'll go ahead and try some of that sympathy soothing syrup. <laughs> Seems to be good for everything. And that's just what I've got. <laughs> anyway, I've got a few minutes before I have to call for Mary. Might as well go in. What can I do for you, sir? I'd like to try a bottle of that sympathy soothing syrup. <laughs> Sympathy soothing syrup? Yes. Sympathy, spelled backwards, is yutapamis. I know. Yut, yut, yutapamis. Yut, yut, yutapamis. Yut, yut, yutapamis. Drive your blues away. Yes, yes, that's what I want. Well, you know, this is rather an old-fashioned drug, though. Old-fashioned? Yes, I, uh, I wouldn't want this to get around, but, uh, we still have some products in here that are spelled frontwards. <laughs> Frontward? Yes. Frontward, spelled backwards, is Trogno. I don't care about it. Now, look, I want... I want a small bottle of sympathy soothing syrup. Oh, the ten cents size. Here you are. Thank you. Would you mind giving me a glass? I'd like to try some of it right now. All right, I'll fix the correct dose for you. I just pour one tablespoon of this soothing syrup into this glass of water. Uh-huh. There. Now, listen to it. This. <laughs> size, we give you a hip boot. <laughs> Never mind, just get me a towel. Now wrap up my bottle. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Oh, Hello, Frankie. How are you? How's Mrs. Sinatra? Fine. Say, Jack, don't forget you're going to be on my program tomorrow night. Oh, sure, I won't forget. See you tomorrow. Okay, so long. Oh, by the way, Jack, uh, do you know what I found out? What? That Sinatra spelled backwards is Artanis. <laughs> So long, Frankie. So long, Jack. Why did I have to ask him to come on my program? His jokes will probably louse up my singing. What do you say, Frankie? Oh, nothing, nothing, Jack. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Yes, 
sorry I promised to go on this program and singing will louse up my jokes there. <laughs> oh, gee, look how late it is. I better go over and pick up Mary. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Yes? What is it, honey? Uh, well, all the girls in my class in high school are collecting autographs and... Well, how do you like that? I only spoke to Frankie and I got some of it on me. <laughs> oh, well, she'll come out of it all right. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Miss Livingston, expect me, Pauline. Oh, yes. Come right in, Mr. Benny. Is Miss Livingston ready yet? No, Mr. Benny. I was just helping her squeeze into her. <laughs> <laughs> into her what? Well, anyway, she'll be putting on her dress next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Why are women always late? Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, there you are, Mary. How come you're never on time when we have an appointment? What are you talking about exactly? Three o'clock now. Look. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. You win watch time. What? Cuckoo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mary. I thought you were cuckoo. I mean, late. Anyway, you were supposed to pick me up ten minutes ago, so you're the one that's late. Well, I would have been here sooner, but first I gave a girl an autograph, and when I got to the corner here, I gave an autograph to a little boy. You know? Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack, why don't you stop chasing him? I didn't chase him, they asked me. In fact, the little boy said that he'd be very happy if he could have the autograph of an actor as famous as I. Naturally, I couldn't refuse such a request. Well, Natch. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> So, Mary, when I signed my name, the boy said, Oh, pardon me, sir, I mistook you for someone else. Another actor? Yeah. Mary, who is Vitamin Flintheart? <laughs> it's hard to explain, Jack, but Vitamin Flintheart is the same to Snowflake as you are to me. Well, thank you. I think. <laughs> anyway, come on, Mary. We won't get any shopping done. All right. I've got my car parked in the driveway. Good. Oh, say, Jack. Uh, Larry Stevens was here a few minutes ago looking for you. He wanted you to hear a new song he was going to do on the program. Oh, well, get in the car, Mary. What is the name of Larry's song? It's called A Sleigh Ride in July, and it's from a new picture, Bella the Yukon. Oh, darn I wish I'd have heard it. Is it a good number for our show? Oh, it's beautiful. Larry sang it for me. It goes like this. <laughs> Drive carefully, Mary. Not so fast. Slow down. Watch out, there's a red light. Now it's green. Now it's red again. Hey, wait, there are three red lights. No, they're green. No, they're red, but there, there are three green lights, too. Hey, there's a blue light. Jack, put on your glasses. That's a Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, yes. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Well, take it easy anyway, Mary. Don't drive so fast. Look out. Slow down. You're turning this corner too well. Oh! oh, Jack, calm down. Don't be so nervous. Well, I can't help it. I'm always frightened when I'm with a woman driver. Woman driver, woman driver. That's all you men always say. Woman driver this and woman driver that. Mary. And I'm getting sick and tired of it. We women can drive as well as you men any day. And lots of my girlfriends Mar are better drivers than their husbands. Mary. And I read in a magazine where scientists have proved that women are better drivers than men. Mary. Because uh, they're less nervous and they concentrate on the road better than men. crashed into the side of a house. <laughs> what? I kept trying to tell you for the last ten minutes you've been driving on the sidewalk. <laughs> My goodness, you've smashed your fenders, broken your grill, and busted your headlights. So what? Months will give me more money for it now. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a store across the street. We can leave the car here. But, Jack, we can't leave the car here. We'll get a ticket. A ticket? Where would he tie it? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I 
chance. Somebody's standing on us. <laughs> hey, Mary, let's not get separated. You, you've got my Christmas list. I got to buy something for Fred Allen and the quiz kids. You know, they lived at my house. Mary, what have I got marked down for Rochester? Rochester? Yes. Three little handkerchiefs. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I better make that an even four. <laughs> I wonder where the perfume counter is. I want to get a present for my sister, Florence. Well, why don't you ask the floor walker? Yeah. I beg your pardon. Are you the floor walker? Yes, and stop breathing on my carnation. It's not as rugged as I am. <laughs> what? They're hard to get, you know. I've kept this one for three years. For three years? How comes it looks so fresh? Because it's growing out of my chest. <laughs> Anything else you want to know, nosy? <laughs> yes, I'm looking for the perfume counter. Where is it? It's straight down this aisle on the left. Oh, there it is, Mary. Let's go over and see oh, if it's... I, I beg your pardon, mister. Oh, me? Yes, uh, what do you think I ought to buy my wife for Christmas? Well, I don't know. Besides, that's a personal thing between you and your wife. You ought to figure that out yourself. Figure it out myself, he says. I've been racking my brains and racking my brains and knocking my head against the wall, and do I know what to buy my wife? No! Well, I'm sorry, mister, but That's I... all right. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. You ask a guy a simple question, what does he tell you? Figure it out yourself. Figure it out yourself. That's fine Christmas spirit. <laughs> Come on, let's go to the perfume counter. All right, but you never get waited on. The girl is so busy. Well, I'll just reach over the counter and see what they have. Mm. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> what? I saw you trying to steal some perfume. I wasn't stealing it. I just wanted to see if it was alluring. At your age, what difference does it make? <laughs> now, look here. I told you I'm not trying to steal this perfume. I was only... Stop trying... breathing on my carnation. <laughs> breathing on your carnation and get out of here. Oh, you're just mad because my eyes are bluer than yours. <laughs> they are not. It's just this suit I'm wearing. <laughs> and furthermore... What can I do for you, sir? I'd like to get some perfume. What would you recommend? Well, we have a very popular brand called Friendship. 68 cents a gallon. <laughs> 68 cents a gallon? Uh, what do you think, Mary? The same as you. The price is right. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I was thinking about my sister in Waukegan. and I wonder if she'd like this bottle of perfume. Well, pull out the cork. She can smell it from here. <laughs> oh, stop. Say, miss, haven't you got something else? What's in that bottle over there? That's the new French perfume that just came in. It's called La Marie Toujours Très Jolie Ici Maintenant. Hmm. That sounds nice. What does that mean in English? Condensation of steam that's been forced through a motorman's slow. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. Come on, Mary. Let's go to another counter. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, mister. What do you think I ought to buy my wife for Christmas? Look, I can't tell you what to buy your wife. You'll have to figure it out yourself. Okay, okay, I'll figure it out myself. Nobody wants to help me. Fine Christmas spirit. You think it was my fault that I'm married? <laughs> the people in the store, and I'm the one he had a pick on there. Jack, I want to buy something for my mother. Ask the floor walker where the ladies' department is. I'm not going to ask that guy anything. Jack, we'll never find it in this crowd. You better ask him. Oh, all right. Oh, Mr. Floor Walker. Yes, my little bifocal yokel. <laughs> Say, Mr. Floor Walker, would you please tell me where the ladies' department is? It's right down at the end of the... Oh, the department! <laughs> over to your left. Thank you. Come on, Mary. Let's get away from this hey, guy. Hey, Jackson. Oh, look, Jack. There's Phil. Hiya, Phil. Come here. You come over here. I can't. I'm looking for the ladies' department. You're wasting your time, Jackson. They're all out of your size. <laughs> oh, filthy like a pair of glasses. You're making a spectacle of yourself. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's get away from here so we'll, we'll wind up in a routine. Here. I beg your pardon, mister. What do you think I ought to buy my wife for Christmas? I don't know. For heaven's sake, stop following me. I don't care what you buy your wife for Christmas. Oh, you don't care, huh? Suppose I buy her something she doesn't like, then she'll get mad at me. Then don't buy her anything. Don't buy her anything. We've been married for 12 years. What are you trying to do, break us up? <laughs> Anything. I don't know your wife. I don't know what you're picking on me for. I've never seen your wife. Hey, what's going on here? What's the trouble? That man's been caught stealing somebody's wife. What? At your age, you gray-haired wolf. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> this man started the whole thing. 
thing over his wife's Christmas present. Well, I don't blame him. You had no business sending her one. Oh. I didn't send her one. Well, I wouldn't brag about it, you cheapskate. <laughs> Jack, it's your own fault for getting into this thing. My fault? These people what accuse me of trying... Let me through. What's going on here? What's go... Oh, it's you, you little goopy with the droopy toopy. <laughs> Cut that out and don't blame me for this because it isn't my fault. This man came over to... Stop me. breathing on my carpet! I'll breathe on it as much as I like. <laughs> Sir, following me around the store, asking me to want to buy your wife for Christmas. Buy her a dog collar, for all I care. What size? <laughs> there you are, folks. You see what a crazy guy he is, and you blame me. Why, it's not my fault. I'm not the type that would start trouble. I'm a peaceful, home-loving... Ah, shut up! <laughs> 